Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Catch me on Instagram, www.instagram.com backslash Creative Katie. See what I'm up to. Don't forget to subscribe and share my YouTube channel with your other crafty friends. Today I have for you Creative Katie's top five craft hack mark making tools. You don't need to buy expensive stamps and stencils to make great marks. Do you have a favorite craft hack mark making tool? Please share it in my Facebook group, Mixed Media Creations, or put it in the comment section below. We can all learn from each other. Hi everybody, Karen Birchall, Creative Katie here. And what you see here is a representation of some of my go-to all-time five favorite mark making tools that you can use. You probably see me use them in jelly printing, but they can also be used to add interest and visual texture and pattern to your mixed media pieces and your art journal pages. So I'm going to clean this all up and we'll get started and I'll show you what kind of great marks you can make with these tools. Okay, so what I have here, this is a silicone baking mat and it's kind of cushy and I find that that's really helpful to have just like when you stamp, they say if you put it on a mouse pad or something soft, you get a better impression and that goes the same for mark making tools. I don't always do that, especially if it's in an art journal book, but just to let you know that it does help. Now, what I have here is my 5x7 Jelly Arts um, gel plate and I'm going to be using this as a stamp pad. Now don't worry if you don't have a jelly gel plate you can just use your craft mat surface. I just find this is a good way of maximizing the use of your gel plate so I just wanted to pass that along. So the first Number one mark making tool that we have is cardboard. Now this could be cardboard that you get from boxes and I'll put a link to the video where I show an easy way of ripping off that cardboard, that top layer, so that you're not sitting there picking forever and a day. So that's that cardboard. The other one you can buy at the dollar store. Like all of these mark making tools are either free or very inexpensive and you, you can, I bought about four sheets of this and it's very fine in comparison, right? So it gives a different kind of mark. And here's another one. Use those coffee liners that you get and that gives another kind of mark. And again, the price is right. So I'm just going to show you a sample of all of these and there will be pictures at the end. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to press it into here. So you can have that. Now when you are using these mark making tools, they're very organic. Organic meaning you're not going to get a perfect kind of stamp but it's going to look really nice on the page. So there is the sample of the one cardboard and I'm just going to write this coffee liner so that you have an idea of what kind of marks that you can do. Now the next one we are going to do just cardboard from a cardboard box, stuff that you've used from your Amazon boxes when you've ordered, right? So you have now you can put the paint on with a brayer. I'm just using a silicone brush. Now depending on if you use thin body paint or thick body paint, you're going to get different kind of marks. I love using this for making kind of a plaid 
look, different colors. And there we have that. And one more. Dollar store cardboard. And it's very, this one is very, very fine. Did that help? I don't know. There you go. Very, very, very fine. Let's just use some, I'm just going to put the paint, layer the paint on here. It's just to use some craft paint, just to show you that You can make some cross hatch. And there you have that. So that is it with the cardboard. Now, number two is a recent find, and that is a Lego, well, a Lego like um, platform. And again, I got this at the dollar store. because I thought, interesting texture. So let's see. So I'm gonna put Now if you have another gel print, you could, gel plate, you could put the paper on top of that and it will even give a, a better print. So there you have those lovely dots. Now I'm going to use the other side. That is absolutely amazing. I love, love, love that. So when I have my um, colored papers that I use leftover paint. I'll often grab these and I just add colors and add details to those colored papers. Okay, so the next one, and you've seen me doing this, is shelf liner. Now that comes in all sorts of patterns and, and whatever. I search out different patterns. Now you can mount them on a block. You can mount them on the back of a cardboard, um, whatever you want. So we're just going to do some samples. Of of that. Now I typically don't even clean it, but you can just throw that into the water, and the the acrylic paint will come off in time. So sometimes I just stamp, instead of cutting it out, I just take this, fold it, and I just dip it. Like that. And you, you know, there's so many different ones, so be on the lookout. That one's kind of cut into a shape, so you kind of get that shape. If you want to avoid the shape, then you just use this whole sheet like this. We have this one, so I'm just going to... So as you can see, you get very different
textures and stamps. Now we're just going to add a little bit more paint here. So here is another one from the dollar store. This is a plastic embroidery mesh and I just cut it into, you get a bigger than copy paper size paper and I just cut it into squares like this and then I just dip If you want to avoid the hard edges like you got here, just kind of circle it up. This could be mounted onto a block. Um, like this. You can just glue it down and then use it, but I prefer having it free and easy like that. So that is great, and I've had a couple projects where I create interesting backgrounds using this. Now the last one is your various mark making tools, containers, lids. So before I throw anything into the recycling bin, I just look at it. So here we have circles and ovals. Children's blocks make interesting um, stamps. The underneath of a um, nail polish is square. So, you know, look at your things, your lids. This one is kind of square. And these make beautiful stamps. So you have, you know, different sizes, different shapes. That one has a circle inside of it, you know, so just, you know, go through the dollar store, you know, because you can get a lot of these children's toys really inexpensive. I'm just curious about this one. This is, this is the lid from SodaStream um, bottles, but I'm curious how that's... Ooh, I'm liking that. That'll look good on a gel plate as well. Another children's toy, just interesting. Here we go. Interesting kind of textures. So, you know, go through your children's toys, look at your lids, you know, the lids from your sprays, the lids from all sorts of things. comes to adding textures to your backgrounds such as this one you know we have the embroidery we have the um, Lego like one we have some some of the round lids you know the sky it was really the limit
Okay, so to recap the top five. So number one, cardboard. And you can get it just boxes that you take the one layer off. Coffee cup liners. And cardboard that you can buy at the dollar store in you know, almost eight and a half by 11 sheets. Another dollar store per purchase, these Lego-like platforms, and you can get two different prints off of this one. You can get these dots, and if you flip it over, you can get these. Great stamp for a buck twenty-five. The next one, shelf liner. Okay, go search out the stores and then do happy mail and send people, you know, six by six squares of shelf liner. This one, I believe, is this. Oh, oh, that's that one. This would be this one. And this one. Also purchased at the dollar store. Another dollar store purchase, plastic embroidery mesh. Cut it into, you know, four by four squares or whatever size works for you. And there's the stamp. Love this one. Now these are all created, I'm going to zoom out, with different lids and blocks that you normally would be throwing out. This one, and whatever size and shape you need. Okay, so go to, to the dollar store look at the products they have there with new eyes, look for that texture, and then come home and create interesting textured and patterned backgrounds using free or very inexpensive mark making tools. Save your crafting dollars. Bye for now.